God. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Matthew 27. Matthew chapter 27. If any of you need direction from Brother Dennis, if you don't know where it is, ask one of us. We don't want you to uh, miss an opportunity to be there tonight just because of directions, alright? It really is just the top of the hill street. You make a right. You go out there, you'll see uh, Little Vince's garage. Come down in there. And uh, I'm in the back of the this morning. Matthew 27, verse number 42. Amen. Matthew 27, 42. You have Sister Susan back. And then we missed her with the work schedule. And then we have each one of you. You can see Chris back with us. But we missed him. Good night, Ted. You know, he's flip flops Sundays with his wife. And I appreciate him being here and each and every one of you. Matthew 27, verse number 42. The Word of God says, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the King of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. I want to focus on that. He saved others. Himself he cannot save. He saved others. Himself he cannot save. It was an air show like none other. The Blue Angels of Pensacola, Florida were giving the show and they were the featured event there. And uh the very best pilots are part of this group, the Blue Angels. And uh, as they were flying above a very large crowd, one of the pilots, Captain Johnny Fuhrer, developed an engine problem. And uh, at first the crowd thought it was all part of the show as his performance uh, was puffs of smoke blowing out of his plane. But through Johnny Fuhrer's earphones, he heard from ground uh, the words, Eject, Johnny, eject. But Johnny continued to fly his plane. He just couldn't and he wouldn't. And Johnny could have saved his own life, but he did not. The words came to Johnny, Johnny, bail out! Bail out, Johnny! Johnny didn't bail out because he knew that there was just the uncertainty of where the unmanned plane would land. Would it land in a, in a crowd of people? Would it land uh, where there were innocent bystanders? And so the potential loss of others' lives kept him from saving his own life. Bail out, Johnny, the commander shouted once more. But the G-forces that were drawing very strong on Johnny's plane, he did, not, uh, he did not bail out. He simply acknowledged to his controller, I will not bail out. And so his plane being mostly inflamed, he aimed it toward an area where he was quickly losing altitude, but he would not, he would not endanger the lives of anyone else. And as all eyes watched, Johnny's plane came down, and Johnny came down to his death. Yeah, Johnny had a wife, Johnny had children. And so as Johnny's wife mourned the loss of her husband. She, claimed, she came to clean out his locker. And there in the remnants of his locker, there was a note on which Johnny had left behind before his accident that claimed his life that Johnny's wife would read. And I'll share the words of that letter a little bit later. But for Scripture, the Bible says, He saved others. He Himself He cannot save. The, if He be the King of Israel, let Him come down now from the cross, and we will believe Him. I want to talk, and I see the time, but I want to talk for a few moments, Brother Eli, of the secret of a successful life. 
the secret of a successful life. Years ago, Barbara Johnson wrote a book, Where Does a Mother Go to Resign? The title of her book is humorous. If you know about Barbara Johnson, she's a very humorous woman. She speaks a lot for focus on the family, or did. Uh, she doesn't as much anymore. But I wonder, where does a creator go and hide that he may resign? That he may regroup. Uh, he knows about everything, but yet in a world that he created so perfectly, he sees all the wrong. Where does a creator go to resign? He knows that a world that he created now sin abounds. Where does he go to reside? Uh, where does he go to uh, uh, when he sees a paradise of righteousness becoming a jungle of just judgment and chaos? Where does a creator go to reside? Amen. The creator, where does he go to reside? The creator of the cross, the creator of the world, the Lamb of God goes to reside upon a cross because he loves you and I. Amen. A cross that stretched out across Golgotha, a place of the skull. There he goes to resign. There is his creator. He resigns in a place where the road of Jericho was, that the Roman crucifixion was, that everyone would see the one who was crucified because there they could jeer them and they could hiss, they could spit upon them, and there they could see the one who was put to death so all could see so that they know that judgment is imminent if you do such a thing by the name. But that is where the king of kings went to resign. When the world was in chaos, when the world was in sin, he went there. And there it was that as many looked upon him, they said, Sister Susan, if he be a king, if he saves others, why doesn't Sister Tina, why don't he save himself? Why doesn't he save himself? I think as we look at both Johnny Fear, we look at Jesus Christ, they teach us some lessons on what is, what is the success of life. What is the secret to success? Did you ever think about that when you were little and you, you think about that, maybe even as an adult, you think about what is the secret to success? I think we all want to find that not far away. What is success? How do we get there? How do we achieve that? What is the secret to success? And I think that when graduations are by the day, that I remember my own graduation. We were not too far away from graduation. Graduates were taught go out, succeed. But what is that for the wall? That is the secret to success. How do they find that? Where's, where's it gained? Let's look at a few things. Is it found in never giving up? Is the secret to success found in never giving up? Do you remember that great speech that was given by Winston Churchill? To that, those, uh, uh, those, uh, those graduates at that college commencement. Uh, here he is, and, and folks are expecting him to give up and, uh, get up and give this really long speech and, 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 and great information. And he gets up and he repeats the words, never give up. And there he is, one of the greatest speeches that goes down in history uh, at this college. Winston Churchill says, never give up. Never, never, never give up. And is that where it comes from, uh, that we should never give up? I think that there are uh, actually uh, applications from the Word of God that would encourage us to never give up. Rejoice not against me, oh my enemy, because enemy, I'm not giving up. I think it's important for us to know to never give up. And he that endured to the end, the same, the Bible says, shall be saved. So never giving up. Be faithful even unto the end, even unto death. Uh, never giving up. Uh, think about uh, how important it is to never give up. You look at folks that are married, and, and, and I've met some amazing people. They've been married uh, 60, 65, 70 years. That's a long time. And they'll give you the advice of never give up. You know, never go to bed angry. 
angry, never get frustrated. How about uh, some people even in their older age climbing Mount Everest? Uh, I, I, I like uh, my wife when she uh, volunteered at Lifeline. There's an older lady there who is simply amazing. Jean is her name, and many of you probably know her. And uh, she was in her 80s, and guess what she did for the first time? She ziplined. Never giving up. You know, uh, that, that bucket list, those have become very popular in, 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 our, in our generation. And that idea of never giving up, uh, perseverance, is that really the secret of life? And, and if we would be determined, uh, would that be it? I've actually met a lot of determined people that are pretty miserable. So I can't really say that determination is the secret to life. There's a a lot of resumes that, 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 that read like a road map and their determination that brought them to riches, but their achievements lead to bereavements and they die lonely and miserable. How many have heard the saying before, it's lonely at the top? Determination. Is that really the life that leads to success? I think there's other things, but I don't really believe that's the I don't believe that's the answer to the word God gives us. I wonder if it's this. We're taught in life, Caleb, to never give up. And yes, I believe that those are good things to share. Well, David, I've heard this said before, never settle for second best. Is that the secret to life? Never settling for second best. Yeah. But there was a professor who stood in front of his class those about to take their last exam of organic biology. Sounds like fun, huh? <laughs> My father-in-law was here this weekend, and uh, he's working on a degree, and so uh, he was doing online classes, and we were sitting there with him as he was taking the test. And, and my wife and I, you know, they were far beyond me, but they was like, wow, some of these questions and the way they aunt asked you, you know, you know uh, it was science, and, you know, uh, but organic biology, anatomy, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, all those things that you need to get your medical degree. A lot of these students were going on to med school, so they were ending up their semester in organic biology. And uh, 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 they were there for their last exam, and uh, the teacher, he was about to hand them the final exam, and he would say, I, I want you to know that it has been my pleasure for me to teach you this semester. Many of the students were like, yes, I'm sure, I'm sure. Uh, give us the hardest class, make it study hard. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it was your pleasure. He said, I know that many of you have worked very hard and many of you are going off to medical school this summer and uh, uh, you're concerned about uh, uh, your grade point average. And uh, the, the class grew very quiet. He said, I, I, I want you uh, to, to think about something now. He said, I'll give you an opportunity. If you want to pass this class with a B, if you don't think you can do any better than a B on this exam, I give you the opportunity now to get up and leave, and I will give you a B on this exam. There are all kinds of students that got up and left the room. There were a few that were still there that had determined that they were going to make an A on this test. So after all of my lefties, I'm going to give you one more opportunity. If you want to sustain a B on this test and in this class, I'll give you one more opportunity. You can leave now and collect a B on this exam. There was one final student who was on, uh, on, on the fence, got up and left. And as soon as all those students had left and the door had closed, the professor looked at those students that were still left in that class. He said, I want to tell you something. He said, I admire you because you did not settle. And because you didn't walk out of the room for a B, I give all you that are left here an A. Mm -hmm. Not settling for second best. 
Amen. There are too many who settle. Amen. Or have their mind made up that I'm not settling for second best. And I believe that is good. Amen. There are many that says I choose the path of least resistance. Uh, but I believe that still, if you have your mind made up, there is something greater uh, that, that in your mind say, I won't settle for second best. That still does not equate to success. Amen. I still think it leaves you with a tire that's climbing up the, the, the tire uh, with a ladder that's climbing up the tire of Babel. Amen. There's still confusion. Uh, there's still uh, something that, that will leave you empty. A project that will never get finished. So second best will never give you success. But I believe this this morning. A life of success is found at Calvary. Jesus hung between two thieves. There he was. He was hung between two guilty, but he was not. Two men had choices of why, did not have choices of why they were there, but one man named Jesus had a choice of why he was there. Others looked at him and said, He saved others, but himself he could he could he could not say. I believe we need to switch that around and change one word. He saved others, but he himself he would not say. The old saying says that he could have called ten thousand angels. But he did not. I think Jesus showed us the light of success as he hung on Calvary. It wasn't, it wasn't in not selling for second best. It wasn't even founded, never giving up. But the life of Jesus was found in this that I put God first. I put others second, and I put myself last. I want to tell you that I feel challenged this morning for us. I see the time. Give me a few minutes. That if we want to find the life of success here in this church, as a church and as individuals, that we've got to learn to put God first. You can say, Brother Seville, I'm doing my very best. I'm never, never giving up on life. I'm doing everything that I can to be successful. I go to my job and I work hard and I'm faithful and I gain every opportunity to move to the top of my job. Amen. Remember, never giving up and never selling for second best can be a lonely position. Amen. And it may not be as successful as you think. And you may say, Brother Seville, but my family, I, it's, my life is all about my family. Amen. I believe that. But if you leave God out of the equation, you have failed in your life. You can put your family first above everything else. But if you put God on the bottom of the agenda, you have failed in life's accomplishments. Amen. God must be first. Amen. I believe that uh, this, this morning it is said uh, that uh, after Jesus had ascended, remember Thomas? Tradition says this of Thomas. Tradition says that that man who said, I will not believe until I thrust, uh, I feel the nail prints in his hands and in his side. I, I will not believe. It is said of that man that it was assigned to him to go to India to be a missionary, but he failed. And so he was sold as a slave and he wound up going to India anyway, but not as a missionary, but as a slave. The king of India at the time said, Who would build for me a castle? I need some servants who will build for me a castle. And so Thomas was delegated. He was questioned by the king. Would you build a castle for me? I want it to be prestigious. I want it to be wonderful. Thomas said, I will do that. The king gave him all his money. Thomas, in the meantime, Sister Beverly, he didn't take that money and build a castle, but he began to give it to all the townspeople who were very, very poor. And the king said, when will the castle be accomplished? When will my kingdom be built? Finally, Thomas said, I need to tell you something, dear king. 
I gave all of your money to the poor and the needy. Your kingdom will not be built here, but it will be built on the other side. The king said, Very well done, Thomas. And he won the king's heart for the Lord. He wound up being a missionary anyway, though he was sold as a slave. You know what Thomas learned? I can do a lot of things in life, but if I don't keep Christ first, I will never know the secret of success in life. And he showed the king the secret of success in life. Amen, God, help us today to know the secret of success in life. It's by living for God and putting God first. I'm closing quickly. Give me a few more minutes. There was a young man who went to college, and his parents were so concerned about him as he went to college. They had raised him to serve God and live for God. And as they had raised him to serve God and live for God, they wanted those ethics and that morality and that relationship with God to stay intact even during his college years when mom and dad were away. And so they gave him a sign that simply said, I am third. They said, son, we want you to hang that in your room. We want you to hang it above your bed every morning and every night. We want you to look at that and think about it. Well, he had, he had roommates that he had roomed with over the years of college. He had colleagues that had come in. And they said, hey, what is that sign about I am third? He said, I will tell you when I graduate what that sign is about. So as years of college, Brother Lehman, I, I, questions arose and it became concern among everyone. And there was dialogue. And finally on graduation day, that young man had a collection of a group of people who said, would you tell us what? What is that sign about? He said, my mom and dad told me when I go to college to remember I am third, to keep God first, to keep others second, and to keep myself last. And they said, is that the reason why you're the president of our class? Is that the reason why you're the president of the YMCA? Is that why you graduated at the top of the class? Is that why you're so well liked? And he said, yes, that is the secret to the success of life. If you will put God first and others second and yourself third. Hey, listen, I know that we live in a world and I believe self-care is so vitally important. But we think self-care is this. We think self-care is going to lay on a beach. We think self-care is, is having a meal that we really like. What did Jesus do for self-care? Before he went to Golgotha, he stole it away in a garden of Gethsemane. And there all alone he prayed. And he said, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass for me. You know what Jesus was doing? It was work, but it was self-care. He was taking care of himself before he went to the cross. There would be people walking the road to Jerusalem who would cheer and sneer at him, who would spit upon him, who would poke him and make fun of him, who would curse him and throw things at him as he was crucified. Hey, others are saved! But what about yourself? See, Jesus was showing us the secrets of success. This is about God. This is about two thieves who I'm reaching out to who well, are saved. Because I love them. It's about the last. But one day, one day, it will pay off. You see, as the widow of Captain John Fear looked through his wallet, with tears falling, she read the words of a paper when he had written. God first, other second, and myself first. God first, other second, and myself first. So while he plunged to his death, he didn't want to go into a stand where maybe thousands would be affected. By his plane that went down. He was faithful in knowing that God would take care of him even in death. So God first, brother second, and 
and so forth. I want to read a poem to you in the mosaic Australian come to play. It's called The Bridge Builder. An old man going a lonely highway came at evening cold and gray to a chasm deep, vast, and deep and wide through which was flowing a swollen tide. The old man crossed in the twilight dim. The swollen stream had no fears for him. But he turned when safe on the other side and built a bridge to span the tide. Old man said a fellow pilgrim here, you are wasting strength with your building here. Your journey will end with the ending day. You never again must pass this way. You have crossed the chisholm deep and wide by building a bridge at evening tide. The builder lifted his gray old head. Good friend, in the path that I have come, have come, he said, there followed after me today a youth whose feet must pass this way. This chisholm that has been not to me, to the fair-haired youth, May a pitfall be. He too must cross in twilight dim. Good friend, I will build this bridge for him. There's a stirring in my soul, a concern. Do we have God first? Or has other things plotted out? The priority of putting God first. Other people may look and misunderstand our life. It doesn't matter if we can be like Christ. He knew while they screamed out at Him, He claims to save others and He can't save Himself. He knew that Sister Rachel God had called Him to this cross. Brother Walton, which for others He must go. He knew, Sister Tina, that one day he would have the privilege of sitting down at the right hand of God. And so he showed us the secret to the success of life. Would you stand right there where you are? If you're able to stand, would you stand this morning? If you're unable, just bow your head and bow your heart. Would you bow your head and would you close your eyes? I need to tell you that for some moms and dads, why well, build the bridge that seems so worthless to build? If you're faithful to the things of God when no one else sees. Because one day, there's some little legs and some little eyes and some little hands that are following you. That they're going to be at the same place you are. And so if you build the bridge, you build it for them. Because God has called you to do that. You may feel like, Brother Seville, I have tried and I'm not giving up, but I don't feel so successful. Success is first found in putting God first, others second, and then yourself. You may say, Brother Seville, I have never, 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 never given up and given up, and I feel like I still haven't made a successful place in that life. This morning, it's not about never giving up. It's about putting God first. So with your heart bent and your eyes closed, I wonder, would you just simply raise up your hand to God and say, God, hear me. I want to put you first in everything that I do. I want my life to be successful. I want it to count. Success is only found in you. So God, the care I give myself this morning is putting you first. Amen. Would you do that? Amen. Would you say, God, here I am. I'm putting you first. My dreams, my plans, my goals, they're all set. God, even above everything else, above myself, above my family, above my friends, God, I place you. My priority in life is pleasing and serving you. Let me just say, 
even though others may not understand my commitment to you, God, I want to leave a legacy. I want to show them Christ in all that I do. So even though I may be misunderstood, God, I'll do your plan and your will that others may see you in me. And God, here I am. One day knowing that the success of life will be measured on the other side. When you say, well done, I'll get a faithful son.